what's up everybody and welcome back to my channel f stock with f dot and yes we're still here trying to keep the content going you know with all that's going on in the world we're still trying to make sure that you get an insight on some behind the scenes of how photography really works and just to give you some great tips and tricks on how to improve your photography so today we'll be looking at some footage and behind the scenes footage from a shoot i had the chance to do with a good friend of mine alex the baja yogi now me and alex have shot a million times of course we've done a lot of stuff on the beach but this time we decided to do something different and bring it into the studio so in the studio is different for her and it was different for me shooting in the studio but we kind of made it work and we came up with a concept that would be something kind of epic the image to me came out really great so we used the eos r on the shoot and of course again i modified it and i think most of the shots i used i used the 100 millimeter macro as a portrait lens because i like that lens i've been using it for years the 100 millimeter macro is a beautiful lens it, it I mean, I know it says macro and people get caught up in saying, oh, it's a macro lens, but you use it for portraiture. But truthfully, it's the most beautiful portrait lens you can have. It's a 2.8 and it just has the right focal length and it makes everything just flat, beautiful and compressed. I love the lens for use in studio when I'm shooting close-ups and portraits. It just does a wonderful job. And as you will see from some of the images, we use a very small space. It wasn't a big space. We didn't have a great lighting setup. Of course, like I've been touting for a few months now, the Gordic V1 was my main light. And I also used a couple other generic lights, nothing heavy, to fill in the gaps. But, you know, I used the Godox V1 and I used another Godox flash for a side light, for a backlight actually. I used another Godox flash for a backlight. But, you know, I did basically all of this with strobes. Like, I didn't set up real studio lights. There was no Pro Photo B1, there was no big soft boxes. I just used flash heads, portable flash heads, the Godox V1, and another Godox flash that I used as a backlight and it worked perfectly. Now the key to the shoot that you will notice when you see the images is the negative fill. And sometimes this is something I wanted to really push home in this video is negative fill. Negative fill is a real thing and a lot of people shy away from it but don't use it because they probably don't know what it is. And negative fill is literally just what it sounds like. If you were using positive fill, you'd use white cards on each side of the model to kind of illuminate the, sh the shadows and bring the shadows up, raising the shadows, like you'd probably put a reflector underneath the model to raise the shadows or to the side, left or right of the model to raise the shadows on the sides of a model. If you're using positive fill, which would be a white card, but people don't sometimes use negative fill, which is using black cards, flags, or a V flat on each side of the model to fill in the negative shadow. So you get your shadows real dark and crispy and you really kind of get like a nice outline on the model and that helps you like this defining it. To me, it makes the image way more powerful when you have like negative fill. And you can see in this image, if you look at the behind the scenes footage that I use the V flat on one side and I have a reflector that is on a frame from a company. I think I ordered it on Amazon, but it comes with a bunch of different material. One of them has a black side and I set that up on the side, next side of the model as negative fill. So she was encased in negative fill. So there was a black V flat on this side and a black reflector on this side. And if you can look at, when you look at these images, you're gonna notice around the edge of the model is a crispy black shadow. It really defines it and brings it out of the background. And I like that a lot, especially with what we did because we were pouring the honey down her face and that helped to define the honey so you can really see it. You can see it because you have that black fill that is not overexposing the honey, but it's kind of defining it because nothing is bouncing around the room. You don't see all of the white walls in the room or the white ceiling. The black is kind of defining all of the edges and everything, her face, the honey that was draining down and all of that other stuff. So that's something that you should think about in your future photography projects. There's positive fill and there's negative fill. Let's jump to the computer, let's check them out and tell me what you think. So we're gonna jump straight into this first image which I think demonstrates easily the whole conversation about negative fill. Now normally what people do is they try to illuminate the shadows and really get the shadows to pop. But if you look closely at this image, if you look closely at this image, you're gonna see that right around the borders of the model, because of the negative fill, you get this real nice dark rim, real nice dark rim around the shadows that it really makes it pop. And that's because of the dark cards, the black cards that we have right up next to the model. Like I said, the model was encased, encased in the, the negative fill. So there was a black card here, 
There was a black card here, and that's how you get these nice rich shadows around the rim of the model. And those things really help define the facial features, the jawline, and all those other stuff, the neck. You really get to see those things in these kind of images when you get that negative shadow that really pops in these areas right around the model because of those black cards and negative fill. And of course, like I always, I'm a big fan of, is the catch light, so as you can see, that Godox V1 on the C stand that is pointing down in a clamshell lighting kind of setup really brings out the highlights in the eyes because you have that box at the bottom and that box at the top that really make those, those eyes pop. Now again, like I was saying, like as you can look at the quality of this image, again, this is EOS R. Again, if you don't have the upgrade, I would advise that, hey, just take a minute and wait. The images coming out of these cameras are still great. And without the money, I don't know if the resolution is worth the money yet. You know, I just don't know if it's worth the money yet because like I say, a lot of the stuff is still going just on Instagram and Facebook and other digital platforms. This is the 100 millimeter um, macro on the, the EOS R, the EF mount. So, you know, I'm thinking like, really? Do you really need to spend that extra money to get that kind of, you know, the resolution that they're touting? You know, let, don't let the marketing fool you just yet. But these, these are the kind of things I like to think about before I make a purchase on a camera. Of course, I have the settings up on the screen so you can see how it was shot, all of the specs, so you understand how we made this image happen. This image was just a 2.8, um, not a 1.4, anything like that. But um, like I said, these images to me came out really great. Another advantage of using the negative fill and the black fill. So we're gonna go to another image. Uh, one of my other favorite images from this set is this one right here. Again, it really highlights the negative fill and how it really makes things pop out of the scene. If I let the room, natural light of the room affect this image, it would really take away the mood of it. And that's what I didn't want to do. I really wanted to give the images a mood and that's what encasing it in that black really did because it really kept the shadows dark and rich and kind of moody. You want that moodiness to really be in the images. You don't want to kind of get the room light bouncing off the walls, especially of a studio with white walls. It's kind of hard to really create moody images because the white light is gonna spill off all of the walls and really just splash into the image all the time. So you're really gonna always be seeing a lot of white. You're not gonna get these rich edges on the images and shadows like right here. If you really look closely right here, you get that rich shadow here. If the black card wasn't here, this would be illuminated. You'd actually be able to see the details in the shadow, but I like it without seeing those details. And again, you know, I don't usually talk about retouch. Y'all know that's my mantra on this channel. Retouch is subjective, objective, whatever. There's a lot of ways to retouch. I have my version. I hope that a lot of you have your version already falling into a style of how you make your retouch work. I could say that there's probably some frequency separation done on this image, really to make all of that come together and really get the skin looking the way it does. But again, to each his own when it comes to retouching. And another image from that set that really shows how the negative fill and the black cards really work to kind of define all of the structure in the image. It really gives the image of anything. That's the layman's term I could give it. It gives the image structure when you have those black cards defining the shadows. You get a lot of structure in the images and that's something that's gonna change the look of your images. It's gonna be that edge that people are gonna say, I wonder why, why your images look a certain way? It's because of small little details that help you to really make things rich. Again, this same thing could be defined in the image that had a lot of white. If you really wanted to bust the shadows and really fill in the shadows with light, you would wanna turn your flags around or your V-flat around on the white side and really make the image pop because you would really put all of the white light, all the light would be close and would bounce off of the V-flats and the, the reflector and really help you to fill in the shadows so you wouldn't have a lot of these dark lines like you're having right now. These would be nice and filled in if that was the vibe you was going for. But again, that's not what I was going for with this shoot. I wanted the shadows to be really rich and so I put the black cards up and the V-flat V flat up to make sure that we could see all of the definition in the image. So as you can see, these images have the definition that I wanted and that's something you can think about. Again, big fan of the catch lights. This clamshell really did a nice thing on the eyes where you could really have the eyes bright and open and everything worked out really awesome in this these images. So I hope that that information. If you have any other questions about how V-flats and negative fill work, you know, hit me in the comments. Let me know what your question is and how it could help your photography, especially if you're just starting out in the studio, you'd want to get some V-flats because they do help define images in studio and block straight light. So guys, I hope you liked that walkthrough of how that photo shoot went and how those images were made. I hope that you learned something, of course. Again, 
Just think about these things as you go into your photo shoot. I can't tell you exactly how to do it because your situation is going to be different than mine. But these videos are just meant to kind of give you some insight into things you should think about when approaching a photo shoot and things that make the difference in images. And reality is, it's the very small things that always make images stand out. It's not always like the big things and all that other stuff. Sometimes it's just the outfit, sometimes it's the location, and sometimes it's just a black card that helps to define the shadows on one side. These are the small things that help you to define your images. So again, check me out on my channel. Of course, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you're gonna see a lot of these images before I even post these videos on my Instagram page. That's at f.242, f.242 on Instagram. If you have any questions, it's best that you drop it right in my DM right there. I'll do my best to respond to all of those things. But again, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, just in case, because I upload these videos kind of sporadically. But if you want to be in the know, hit the notification bell so you know just as soon as I post those videos. Again, thank you for checking out my channel, F Talk with F Dot. See you next time. <laughs>